and welcome back. So the first thing we want to work on today is fixing up our walking cycle because if you'll notice here, when I'm walking with the right leg, it lands at the same point, the same plane as the left leg when it takes off. However, when the left leg lands, it lands above the plane where the right leg is taking off. And I've got these little reference lines that I put up here in a second to show where that plane is that I'm working with. So the easiest fix for this is to just extend the right leg out. So I just have to take a quick second and go over that just to make sure that the whole walking loop is nice and seamless. And while I'm making my way through that, I was considering how I'm going to have the character walk from the distance up into the foreground here. And with walking cycles, they talk a lot about bobbing, where in the middle of a step, your character's head is up high, and as you're taking the step forward, your head is up low. So it's going to be interesting to try to work with the perspective and take the bobbing into account as the character's head is bobbing larger and larger into the foreground. I guess I'll just kind of have to wing that and see what happens, but it's a good thing to be cognizant about now. Also, hey look, it's me, recording live again, because I forgot to hit the record button for the last hour! Uh... So here's what I've been doing in the meantime. First thing I had to do was resize everything, because I realized that while I was using the reference, there was no way that I was going to be able to properly have this character interact with the grid without actually having the grid or and the gap to work with. So, let me just scroll back a little bit here, and here it was as I chose a moment where he's about to step, and I'm just going to work backwards, resizing from there. So, I gave myself here a frame to work with put one behind it so that way I could see where my motion was going and then I started working individually in all the frames to where he's stepping and he, at this point he realizes that there is the gap and begins to slowly start reeling and I was trying to figure out what type of reeling I wanted to do so I spent an awful lot of time jumping back and forth in my room <clears throat> like hop hopping uh hopscotching over different things in my room to try to get a feeling for how one would be walking without knowing that there's a gap and then suddenly realize it yet not actually falling in and I decided on this little hop motion where he's mid because <clears throat> he has to stop having momentum going forward and a funny way of stopping that motion is to kind of have a stutter hop on the leg that he's bouncing on like yeah, oh, okay okay and then back up a little bit so it kind of creates this round arc where he's stepping in on the leg stepping forward arcing up as he pushes off with the left leg and then with that same motion attempts to push himself back and in doing so in a sense of surprise it becomes this panicking hop back so now that I actually remember how to press a button, we can get back to actually watching all of these frames get made. So while I'm animating this segment, there are two things to keep an eye out for. Two segments which caught my eye and which were the focus of most of my efforts. The first is the right arm and the right elbow and how it swings back behind the body. And the second is the left foot and how after it pushes off, it, it arcs all the way over down behind itself. And how does the rest of the body follow that foot in that arc? And since the foot's on screen right now, we'll just knock that one out. So the considerations here are with the left leg, how does the knee actually bend and springlessly support the motion that the foot is creating while pushing off? And then how does the right leg react? Because when you do jump and push off, your right leg still kind of like attempts to push off in midair with it and I needed to keep track of that right leg. And speaking of springiness, the spine also does the same thing. Again, everything is reacting from this pushing force from the leg, and the whole rest of the body is sort of at its disposal, or, uh, or at its mercy. So we have the primary motion, that is the left leg, and then all the secondary motion, which is the right leg, the torso, the arms and the head, etc., all respond in one way or another to the instigating motion that is said leg. On the complete opposite side of the body, we have the right arm, which is really more of a lesson in perspective than anything else. So much like when I was doing the walking where the right arm had to first be behind the torso and then swing forward, and I had to do the perspective of the arm looking as if it gets shorter in frames, when really that's just the way the camera sees it, I have to do the same thing here, where the right arm 
goes forward right before we do the jump and then as we jump back the arms and the right elbow goes up and then actually spins back behind the head and again it creates these weird frames where the arm is getting shorter and the perspective is sort of contorted and then at one point it looks like the whole arm is like this t-shaped thing it's a single line that's right behind the shoulder which all feels really weird to do when you're doing it frame by frame but it's really important for and for capturing that forward oh god no i want to jump back ah arms support me as i make my way back and land again ah oh, there we go the shoulder does this roll and the stick figure does a pretty good job of simulating that arm roll Now we get into the second half of the motion, which is the foot landing. And this gets into one of the principles of animation that we've learned about before, which is follow through. So when we land, we don't just land and then stop. We land and our body settles in, maybe even bounces up a little bit. So I had to try a couple of different ideas for how I wanted this jump land to follow through. And I decided that the best thing to do would be to have the left foot come down, you know, frame by frame until the heel hits the ground. Then the character will actually roll back on their haunches, straightening out the left leg, which is forward a little bit. And that squeeze of the right knee and then pushing back up, that's going to be what the follow through is and then we can even go another step further and add a frame at the end of that where after we roll back up we settle back down again because there's not only motion coming from up to down when we're in the air and then landing there's also a little bit of motion left over when we swing back up and then a little bit of settling back in again so there's actually two settles in which sort of make this sine wave with the character's pelvis so, while that's happening with the lower body, we have considerations for the torso and the upper body. The torso is pretty straightforward because it either bends or it doesn't. There's really not much twisting to be shown with a stick figure body like there will be when we do rib cages and old torsos, etc. But I can definitely have a bit of springiness of the spine bending forward and back. So, on the actual impact of the land, we'll certainly have the spine be con contracted a bit. And then as we're rolling back, the spine will extend again. So that way, it's this uh, <gasps> sort of emotion. And lastly, we have the upper body and the head. The head's a really simple one. I always want it to be facing the gap because this whole motion is being done in response to actually noticing the gap. So because it's all going to go by really quickly and it's supposed to be a startling reaction, the head's always going to be looking down and that's just going to match where the neck is where the and the torso is and the head will just always stay kind of like a, like a chicken head always stays in spot no matter where you wiggle the body. The head's going to do the same thing, only it's going to be always looking in the same direction no matter which way the torso is bending. And finally, 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 we have the arms. Now, the arms can really do anything, honestly. Uh, anyone's going to react differently to being startled. Some people have their arms forward defensively, outside for balance, back to help brace themselves, up to being startled, or any combination of those. So this is just a personality bit, and I decided that I wanted to have a <gasps> la gasp sort of motion with the hands. So with the left leg being forward and the right leg being back, it makes sense that the right leg right arm right arm be forward the left arm be back and with that the right arm will come up to the chest like <gasps> who put this gap here and the left arm will go back and sort of balance naturally and it it does just kind of hang there but at the same time it doesn't need to do any more because all the attention is ideally just going to be focused on the head looking down the torso bent back and the hand on pressing on the chest And with that, I have all of my frames for the jump.
Now comes a long, arduous process of figuring out which direction I want to go from here. Do I want to work on the actual jump itself, or do I want to work on the walking up? And I figured because I wanted to just see all the work that I had done, that I was going to do the work up, or the, the, the walk up, because I thought that that would create a nice, satisfying bit to end on for the video. Lord, I had I, I, I had no idea what I was getting into, just how obnoxiously frustrating this is. Um... <laughs> So the first step here is I wanted to figure out how many loops of the walk I wanted. I really wanted the character to walk all the way from the distance up into the frame, because I didn't think it would really be all that hard to just copy and paste all these images and just kind of infinitely go off into the distance. But I got really caught up in this fa in the Toon Boom Harmony, like I've messed up before, it makes a really big difference between copying a frame and copying a vector within a frame, and I ended up just getting kind of lost in the sauce and figured I would go look into it in the future. So right now we're actually focusing on finally getting to work on the resizing of all the images that we've made. And the first thing I did here was I made a, a reference line from the closest version of the character, the top of their head, dragging that line over to my vanishing point over to the right, so that way I would always have a reference line for how big or small the character should be at any given point as I make my way off to the horizon line. Then here I have my first perspective problem, where I have the left leg when it's on the ground before the jump and after the jump. With the perspective grid, it actually makes him look like he jumps sideways instead of straight backward from this two-point perspective, so I have to move around the body up and to the right so that way it looks like he's quote unquote jumping backward. Now I begin taking all the drawings that I made and systematically placing them where they need to go into the timeline of my perspective grid here. And my anchor point that I'm using as a reference for this is the left foot, or more importantly, whichever foot is on the ground at the time. So I place the foot that's on the ground, I readjust the size of the image using the head as a size reference, so foot is a placement reference, head is a size reference, so, and, and keeping the head right below this reference line that I've made here. I could say reference four more times if I really wanted to. <laughs> Anyways, I'm able to keep track of how small the character gets as they make their way off into the distance. And then the real problems began. The right leg was drawn on a flat plane, a flat horizontal plane. I didn't draw it from an angle as if I was on a perspective grid. So it makes the character look like this moonwalking whenever the right leg lands on the ground here. So from every single frame from this point forward, I have to redraw the right leg smaller and more to the, well, I guess, to the upper left of where it was before, so that way it looks like it's moving backward into the distance instead of sort of crisscrossing its way and shooting out to the right. A consequence of this is that because the leg is now being placed smaller into the back, it actually ends up making his pelvis look like it's a little bit more forward, which does kind of work out now that I think about it, because I really wanted this comedic, happy-go-lucky walk, and having your pelvis forward while you're doing that is already sort of an accepted way of that to look. So, I don't know, happy accidents. I'll take it. I also had to make sure that while I was moving the right leg over, I wasn't losing track of the placement of the right leg in the walking cycle. That way, I might accidentally get those out of sync. Now, you may notice here that I'm not taking bobbing into account, which was something that I had thought that I was going to want to do. And around here, which I'm at the, the three hour mark, I realized that I was spending way too much time doing something that wasn't the jumping the gap, which is what I'm supposed to be doing this whole time. There's so many extraneous details that are going into this, which it's obvious it's animation. It takes a long time to do things. But with each passing frame that I'm putting in here, I felt like I was getting further and further away from what the exercise was actually trying to teach me. 
So I decided that I didn't need to do the bobbing because it's a stick figure. That's something that I can practice on the walk cycle. Right now, I just need to make the character walk up to the gap, so that way I can get to the point where I'm actually doing the part where he jumps the gap. So on that note, I'm going to do a bit of a time skip because this next section is just me trying to elongate the walk even more by copying over frames, but I ultimately decide that it's not worth it for the very reasons that I just expressed. So now, let's just get right on to the part where I'm done and we can look at what we've worked on. So we have the whole walk from the horizon line all the way into the foreground where he's getting bigger as he makes his way closer to the camera. Then we stop, look down, and surprise at the gap, jump back, land, and then assume our <gasps> the gasp pose. I have to say, overall, this is really smooth. I already liked the wonky animation, but I wasn't really sure whether or not I would like it when it's going from getting smaller to larger, and it came out pretty nicely. It doesn't have that bobbing, but I don't think it needs it. It gives the unbelievable impression that we're, have, that we're walking forward. Screw it, that's all we want. As for the jump, that little kick they does with the right leg was a complete accident, but I have to say, it really helps sell that knee-jerk reaction of him trying to push himself away from danger from the gap, so that came out nicely. And the landing with the leg making its way back, the arm making its way forward, all of that comes off really smoothly. Now, I don't think that I got the dipping and the follow-through that I wanted, so I might want to go back and try and make that a little bit more... I don't know, what's the word? Like, extreme, a little bit more visually obvious. So I may start off next episode with that, but that's just a detail point. What's really important is the actual jumping the gap. Now I have like seven different actions in my planning that I wanted to do. I wanted to have him step forward, look to the left, look to the right to try to get around the gap, then sigh, then stretch, then step back, and then jump. I don't want to actually be drawing the jumping part of this exercise on episode 7. So I'm actually going to skip all of those in the interest of getting down to the meat of the thing. I know it's probably going to take one, maybe even two episodes to animate the jump and get it the way that I want it to with resizing and landing and being taken into account. So I'm going to forego all of that and get to the meat of it. Now that I've obviously built a scene that justifies the character getting to a point and performing an action, all the other embellishments don't really give us any more that we don't already have. So, starting the next episode, I'm going to move right into the squat, then propelling forward, and into the jump, and hopefully I'll have at least half of the jump done by the end of the next episode, and I should have ideally no more than two more episodes to make. I'm going to try really hard to make this no more than a four-parter. So, with that, we have all the setup we need to make a great jumping animation, and thank you all so much for joining me for this process, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, you have yourselves a wonderful however long. Oh no, that took a little longer than anticipated, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Sue, if you've made it this far, hey, let me know how you're holding up in the comments below. How's your personal project coming along? And if it isn't, let us know one tiny yet specific thing that you're going to do to get back on track. Oh, and uh, before I forget, here's some inspiration from Guzu, including some great time lapses and tutorials.